Thanks for staying up with us for another round of sound. This is the number one Cochrane Sports Showdown. I'm your host, Josh Taylor. In tonight for Bob Pompiani, who is taking a much deserved vacation. Hopefully, he is rested up. We've got a lot to talk about this evening. Busy week for the Penguins. We'll talk about all the moves they made, what happens next for them. Also, the Steelers. Le'Veon Bell. As a running back retiring from the NFL, we'll talk about the legacy of the running back position. Plus, we'll talk a little bit of Pirates as well. And we've got a great panel to help us do that. Starting from left to right, from the Fan Morning Show, Colin Dunlap. He's one third of the, excuse me, one quarter with the addition of Doran Dickerson of the group there. In the middle, my cohort from the Trib, that's Chris the Buzzsaw Damsky. And on the far right, from 93.7 The Fan and the Pittsburgh Post Gazette, it is Paul Zeiss. Gentlemen, let's get started with the Penguins' pretty crazy week. Resigning of Evgeny Malkin after it had already been reported he was going to test free agency. 24 hours later, he's back in the fold. Then over the weekend, a couple of big trades. My first question, Colin, we'll start with you. Yeah. The Evgeny Malkin signing, the details of the contract, your first reaction when you heard it. Uh, my first reaction was this was always going to be the case if you weren't going to trade him in 2018 or 2019. I think the term is probably too long, but much like any, a lot of baseball contracts or a lot of hockey contracts, you're going to pay probably uh, two, maybe even three years. In this case, I think probably two years too many. Um, and that's what it is. That's the going rate now. You hope to get, I think that you have probably a hundred good games, maybe 125 good games left of Evgeny Malkin. Unfortunately, in the way the contracts are structured, especially for good players, you're going to have to overpay in term. I think that the rate, the, the money is absolutely right. It's just what's he going to be at the end of that contract? That was one of the sticking points was the term, whether it was three right. years versus four years. Chris Adamski will go to you with, for this one because one of the discussions was keeping the band back together, was it good for sentimental purposes or was it their best chance to win? Where did you fall on that one? I just feel like this. If you were going to keep Sidney Crosby, right? You know the Penguins weren't going to trade him or dump him or have him leave or he want to leave or anything like that for a lot of reasons, and numerous reasons. Marketing, you can go on and on, legacy. Here we go. So you're keeping Sidney Crosby, right? You have a 35 year old franchise center, your best player. If you're doing that, you're not going to do a total rebuild anyway. What would be the point of trying to retool and rebuild? I heard about rebuilding around Sidney Crosby. I know you have Gensel, okay, but that's not really. If you were going to go for winning a cup in 2023, 2024, this is the way you probably had to do it because if you let Malkin go, if, if you let uh, Latang go, you had to bring somebody else in to fill their spot anyway. It's probably going to make the same amount of money and probably not be as good as they are, at least right now. Maybe two or three years from now, but you deal with it, kick that can down the road, and, and you kind of realize you're not going to be a very good hockey team at that point anyway. Paul, you and I talked about this Friday, how your reaction to the contract. I know you, for one, weren't a big fan of it, but there was a discussion of were there better options out there? If, if there was a better option out there, what was it for the Penguins? Well, here's the thing. There might not have been better options there right now. But maybe at the trade deadline, a couple of rental players. And guess what? If you had all that cap space that you just spent on a 35-year-old injury-prone center, you might be able to go get a guy. What happens if your two injury-prone goalies are injured and now uh, you need to go get a goalie at the trade deadline because you're going to try and win? See, I think people were looking at it as all or nothing right now. Like, oh, well, who are you going to sign right now? Okay, well, there's nobody probably available right now that you could get. But that money, every, under the salary cap, you go get, you know, a couple of complimentary players. You give yourself two or three extra million dollars to have. And then maybe next year, you go out and get somebody. So but I think, my don't point you is, think that the Penguins think, Paul, that having Malkin employed, and, and I can understand where you're coming from, but having Malkin employed allows them to get to that deadline best suited in contention? But, but, that, but Because there wasn't anybody perhaps, right Perhaps, but my thing is, you've got, you, Latang made sense. Crosby made sense. Rust made sense. They have Gensel. They've got a pretty good core group of players, but the problem is they're 0 for 5 in their last five playoff series. Well, I think a so lot of what, the problems. Like, what magical dust is going to come over this core that they're going to all of a sudden make a. Josh, a... isn't a lot of the problem, too? We could talk about the skaters all we want, right? And they need to step Ex up and need to play better right. uh, the Fair. last five playoff series. Fair that question. being said, we're still two playoffs into this Tristan Jari situation, and we don't know what kind of playoff goaltender he is. And which made, Casey which made perfect back, sense then to keep Casey DeSmith around. True. As opposed to going and getting an experienced guy in case Tristan Jari doesn't, you know, and again, nothing against Casey. He's been case. hurt in the last two playoffs. Exactly. Too, Smith I mean, these so, guys get hurt. That's the and problem. And that's the next and question facing this team: what to do with Tristan Jari? I mean, he's eligible for an extension right now. Do you extend him? Do you not? I'd say no, because as you can see, they re-sign players anyway when they hit free agency. So there's really kind of low risk. It's not like you're going to lose him to a walk. Maybe there's no reason to extend him right now, in my mind. And there's a third goaltender situation which reared its head during the playoffs. They brought Dustin Tokarski back. He had some history with them in Wilkes-Barre, so he's. 
they're number three on the depth chart. Let's shift over to the trades that happened yesterday. They came down within a couple hours of each other. John Marino goes to the Devils uh, with a third-round pick, and they get Ty Smith back, or just Ty Smith and a third-round pick back. Then they send Mike Matheson with a fourth-rounder to Montreal to bring back Ryan Paling and Jeff Petrie. Petrie probably the bigger piece of that deal. Chris, we'll start with you. Your reaction to those two trades and those two defensemen coming back? I feel like this is one of those situations where people said the team's stale, a team needs a shake-up, needs something to change. They lost four series in a row, five series in a row, four years in a row in the first round. This does that, right? Now, you could objectively say, sit here, and who's better, Mike Matheson or Jeff Petrie? They, to me, they're kind of similar players to a point. I know one of them is right-handed and left-handed. you got that whole situation. Uh, Ty Smith's a nice young player that maybe turns into something, maybe a Justin Schultz-type defenseman that, that eventually comes to this system, an offensive system with talented players and becomes a good player. And, and they lowered their cap hit uh, with the move. So overall, I don't need anything to complain about, but I don't know if it's really going to tra you know, transform the team that, that great. I just can't believe Pedersen's still part of this organization. Hey. Uh, I, you know... Matheson goes, Marino goes, Pedersen, everybody thinks, is, you know, on his way to the airport. And for him to still be part of this organization just absolutely stuns me when you get on the other side of it. They, they could have, they could have, uh, I mean, there's some other guys that could have traded. I, I think they could have traded Dumoulin. And I think that, that would have been a very, you know, a big move. But to me, again, you got to make some moves to get some certain pieces into different places. And I think Dumoulin is a guy probably his best days are behind him because he's another guy that's starting to get hurt a lot. He's starting Last to get injured. Contract, you know too. I mean? Exactly. So to me, like, there were some moves to be made. One of the things that concerns me, though, is when Ron Hextall was talking about how we needed to get bigger, right? The league is getting faster, not bigger. And, and, and they added another 30-something guy. Like, have you, the Rangers, you watch all these younger teams with all these young legs. It's all speed-based. Yes, they hit, they, and they got some bigger guys to hit, but that's the concerning you've part. You've got to be able to skate with these teams. Is that very Brian Burke and very Ron Hextall? Is to go kind of older and you know more experience, more grit, more more uh, and the head, sandpaper. And the head coach and hates that's that fine. Style, right? Yeah, yeah that, that's trouble. He's not a but fan all of that, this whole discussion way. is very incomplete. Even the Pedersen part, whether Pedersen or Dumoulin, I think one of them probably is still going to go at some point. We need to wait a couple more weeks to see kind of how this all shakes out in the end because they're not going to bring the nine defensemen to camp. I was going to bring that point up nine defensemen and Ron Hextall acknowledged that yesterday so my question Paul will come to you for this one what is the next move we're still talking about Marcus Pedersen they expected him or a lot of people expected him to be moved what do you do now if you're Ron Hextall well again we just talked about it I probably do I move I, I actually might even move Tristan Jari I know that is a but if you can get the right deal for a goalie I mean I would I might do that and what do you build up after you do I that? don't think they would do that I well, don't think they would do that but I think if you trade you know again there are guys on this roster that you could trade and maybe get, you know, some decent pieces Pedersen to build has on. To go. Pedersen has well, to go for good. a third or fourth round, uh, or excuse me, right. for, for a third it. or fourth line help. I mean, you have to build up the bottom, the bottom half of your forwards. You have to do something there. They've not been good enough, and that just it has to happen. And that's where cap space is needed to try to help get guys to fill that bottom six, especially when you let guys like Danton Heinen and Evan right. Rodriguez walk. We got to take a break. When we come back, we will talk about the Steelers. We'll talk about the running back situation. Le'Veon Bell has officially retired. We'll get into more into that when we come back. Stick around. Number One Cochrane Sports Showdown is brought to you by Number One Cochrane. Go one better. 